Welcome to I Believe TV, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques the media and government use to keep you in the dark. My name is Justin Ballett and today I'm going to be showing you the mentality, or better still, the lack thereof, of those people who call for the decriminalization of marijuana. So for today's episode, I'm going to be telling you a little story about what happened in the United Kingdom. Well, a number of years ago, the United Kingdom government came out and they said that they are going to decriminalize marijuana. Immediately after saying that, all of the big, huge, corporate, branded organizations, all those well-known international organizations that call for the reform of marijuana laws, stood up and said, look at all the effort we've put in. Look at what we've done for you guys. We've forced the government to decriminalize. And everybody was so happy. They were all running around in the streets. They were all jumping up and down. Everyone was saying in two years time, London was going to be the new Amsterdam. There were going to be coffee shops everywhere. Everybody was going to be able to smoke. You were going to be able to buy the marijuana. It was going to be fantastic. They were going to start with the decriminalization. They were going to move on to the regulation and the taxation to make it into a legalization issue. And then everybody was going to be so happy and, and marijuana is going to be so free. It was going to be fantastic. But of course, that's not what happened. So what actually did happen? Well, as I keep saying, whenever they decriminalize marijuana, the government always brings in at the exact same time a mandatory minimum jail sentence. In London, it was 15 years. So if you were caught growing marijuana, it was automatic 15 years. If you were caught selling marijuana, it was automatically 15 years. But if you were caught in possession of marijuana, approximately 8 grams, if I remember correctly, then they wouldn't prosecute you for the possession of marijuana. Whenever they were stopped by the police and searched and they were caught with marijuana, every single one of them was arrested. When they went and sat in the police stations, they were not charged with the possession of marijuana, obviously because the possession of marijuana had been decriminalized. They were asked, where did they get the marijuana from? Because obviously if you grew your own marijuana, that means that you were committing an offense still, that was 15 years in jail. So growing your own marijuana meant you still went to jail for 15 years. Yes. But what about if you had purchased the marijuana from somebody? Well, the law said it was only the possession of marijuana that wouldn't be prosecuted. However, purchasing an illegal substance was still uh, an offense and you would still be prosecuted and you would still get the 15 years. So the people were either charged with purchasing an illegal substance or they were just charged as being dealers. Even if you were caught with one gram on you, that's it, you're a dealer. That's what the government classified you as. Now, even though you weren't a dealer, you would uh, be arrested on that day, you would sit in jail, you wouldn't get any bail, and you would sit in jail for one month before you had a chance to see a judge. The judge, obviously, and the, and the state would eventually drop the charges of dealing against you, but for one month or two months, you would sit in jail waiting for your, for your court appearance. And not many people wanted to do that. So they were given an option. You know, either we're going to charge you with dealing, and if we don't get you on the dealing charge, then we're going to charge you with purchasing an illegal substance. It's all 15 years. Do you understand? It didn't matter about the decriminalization aspect. That didn't matter. No one was being charged with that. They were being charged with growing. If they didn't grow, they were being charged with dealing. If they didn't deal, they were being charged with purchasing an illegal substance. Do you understand? So the government came along and made all these new rules and everyone was going to go to jail for 15 years. But if you tell us who you bought the marijuana from, if you tell us who your dealer is, we will then drop the charges. And obviously every single one of them sang like little canaries and said, this is my dealer, this is my dealer. Over the space of a few months, every single major marijuana dealer and every single major marijuana grower in the UK was busted. They were taken down and they all went to jail for 15 years, except for those who knew how to use the human rights defense. The price of marijuana went from 20, uh, 20 pounds uh, an eighth up to 60 pounds an eighth, which is what always happens. It always triples in price. And the people who uh, had been purchasing the marijuana now had no one to buy from. And all the other people were in jail. And that's the situation that you have, because that's what governments always do. It's a trick. The decriminalization story is a trick. And that's what they want to do. They want to trick you. It's all a, a big con to see how stupid you actually are. Who is that thick? Who has that little intelligence to fall for the same con over and over again? 
they keep doing the same thing. And once the government had busted all of the growers and all of the distributors of the marijuana, they then came out and said, oh, this decriminalization thing, it's not working. We're going to make it illegal once again. And so it went back to the point where even if you were caught with one gram, that was at 15 years in jail. And so for those of you who are calling for the decriminalization of marijuana, I would suggest that you go and see what happened in London. Go and see what happened in the UK. Because this is going to happen wherever they do this. They always bring in a mandatory minimum. And then they always catch whoever it is. It doesn't matter how much marijuana you've got on you. If you've got one little roach in your pocket, you're automatically charged as being a dealer or you're automatically charged with purchasing an illegal substance of which you still get the mandatory minimum sentence. So there's no break for anyone, there's no one getting off, there's no, oh it's been decriminalized so that the end users don't get into trouble because as far as the government concerned, no one is an end user. Everyone is a dealer, everyone is uh, doing something illegal. And that's the way decriminalization works. So I hope that you're going to realize by the end of this video that decriminalization has got to be the stupidest policy that any single person could ever stand up and suggest. It's not easier. It's not the way to go, let's do that first and then, because that doesn't happen in reality. In reality, you go to jail for 15 years. That's the reality. In reality, the price of the marijuana triples. That's the reality. South Africa is not going to become the new Amsterdam. We're not going to have coffee shops everywhere. You're going to be sitting in a jail for 15 years because you thought that the government was honest. A government that's been dishonest about marijuana for 100 years, all of a sudden is going to tell you the truth. All of a sudden they're going to be on your side. They're making a policy that's going to benefit you. How can you be that naive? How can you be that stupid? How can anyone be that stupid unless they are an agent of the government, in which case of course they're going to be promoting the decriminalization of marijuana. But anybody else, anybody who has the ability to think and reason for themselves, anybody who still has a brain that can function on its own, will know straight away that decriminalization is a trick and it's a policy to bring in mandatory minimums and to expose the dealers and to get them all shut down.